Hello, my beautiful people. It's your favorite historian, Dr. Katel here. A lot of you have been telling us to do more videos, talk about culture, dive deeper into a particular area of history, or tell the history of other countries. You have been requesting and we have been listening whilst looking for a way to achieve this. And finally, I believe we have found one. We are working with creators from all over Africa and the diaspora to launch our very own edutainment streaming platform. On this platform, you'll be able to watch courses on the history and politics of various African nations, as well as take a deep dive into the cultures of the different ethnic groups and much more. In order to make this platform a reality, we need your help. If you are a video editor, an animator, or simply interested in doing research and presenting content, get in touch with us. Email us at info at africastory.co. The more of you we have, the more content we can create quickly. It is time we took charge of our own narrative and tell it the way it deserves to be told. Much love, Dr. Cartel out. In our last episode, we discussed the beginning of Ibrahim Babangida's reign, also known as IBB, and how he kept postponing the return to civilian rule and the complicated process he put in place to slowly return to civilian rule. In this episode, we are going to discuss the civilian rule and what happened in Nigeria when it began, and you're going to see just how short it was. So therefore, this episode will also be a short one. Now, in 1993, the Dukutono Agreement was signed between the interim government of Liberia and main rebel groups marking the beginning of an effective ceasefire, so the Ikogmog mission led by Nigeria could now finally rest. The final settlement actually occurred in 1997, when Charles Taylor won the elections. In the same year, back in Nigeria, MOSOP, Movement for the Survival of Ogoni People, presented an Ogoni Bill of Rights to Babangida, requesting the right for the Ogoni to be represented in the Nigerian political scene and a larger share of oil revenues and device to protect their environment from the degradation at the hands of oil producers. They organized protests that turned into riots and young activists began to promote the use of tactical violence to achieve their goal. In June of 1993, the elections for the leaders of the two parties, SDP, the Social Democratic Party, and NRC, the National Republican Convention, were held yet again after the previous results being cancelled by Bangida. The two successful nominees were Chief MKO Abiola, a Yoba businessman for STP, and Bashir Tofa, a Kanuru businessman for NRC. On the 12th of June, the presidential elections were held. Most international observers deemed this election to be Nigeria's fairest and most peaceful election so far. MKO Abiola won. But then, on the 23rd of June 1993, IBB said he wasn't going nowhere. He annulled the elections and used silly excuses. He really just didn't want to give up power. Everybody disagreed with him. Politicians, international spectators, Nigerian citizens, everybody said, this guy, go, we don't want you. US and other countries imposed sanction on Nigeria just for that, but also because of their failure to gain full certification for counter narcotics. Nigeria exploded into anarchy again. Furious riots exploded all over Nigeria. Even the military couldn't control it. It was chaos. Over 100 people dead. The South wanted the restoration of the June 12 results and the North became the center of pro-IBB rallies because the Tofa, the Kanuru businessman, he didn't win. So they were like, let's just support IBB. New civil societies such as CD, Campaign for Democracies, formed. It was a coalition of previously banned ones like NANS, and NLC. So I'm saying the acronyms are too much. Anyways, these societies were calling for restoration of the results and tried to push for a general strike, but the North wasn't having it. Association for Better Nigeria, ABN, a pro Babangida group funded by the government, continued to support the annulment. Other fringe groups like MAD, Movement for Advancement of Democracy, organized terrorist activities, see they are mad, against the state, hijacking planes and so on. Yoruba activists were openly talking about the Southwest succeeding away from the Federation. Rumors of the resurgence of Biafra also began spreading in the Southeast, as Nigerians once again questioned if they could really work as one nation. Parangida was messing up, honestly. And eventually a compromise was reached. They would put the issue of the election annulment on hold and IBB agreed to hand over power to an interim government council, IGC, led by his friend and ally, Ernest Shonenko, on 27th of August 1993, the day Abiola would have been inaugurated into presidency. The funny thing is, 
Obangida then tried to go back on his word again <laughs> and keep himself in power. But without popular or military support, he eventually gave power to Eneshu Nenko, leader of Obangida's transitional council. This interim government council then proceeded to behave stupidly too. The purpose of Eneshu Nenko's IGC should have been to quickly hand over power to Abiola ASAP, but they didn't do that. Instead, they chose to rule until the next elections in February 1994. In 1993, IGC made a litre of gasoline 5 naira, which provoked such a negative response from Nigerians that they had to reduce it to 3.5 naira. On the 10th of November, the Lagos High Court declared IGC illegal and unconstitutional as they didn't want to allow Abiola into office. IGC tried to dispute the claim and appeal, but everyone questioned its legitimacy because really, they just look like greedy, opportunistic power grabbers. Plus, the organization itself was weak. So you know what that meant, right? Yep. Cool time. Let's do a quiz this time. For those of you who are alive around this time, leave a comment below and try to guess the plotter of the next coup. Nigeria's generals seem to love plotting coups after all. Don't worry about this episode being short. I'll make it up to you and the next episode will be a longer one. As usual guys, all the mede mede, the bibliography is in the description below. Don't forget to share this. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We need the numbers. Also, hit the little notification bell so that you are alerted when we release the next episode. And if you don't know by now, we are launching our own streaming platform for African authentic edutainment content. It is called Africa Story. Go to the website, check it out, subscribe to it, support us. It is time we take charge of our own narrative and told our own story. Thank you.